Today we're talking about a topic that divides many of us here in the Second Amendment community, and that's, should felons get their Second Amendment rights back? Yeah, that is one that usually people are very divided on, and we're going to talk about that. Before I get into it, I want to thank the sponsor of the video, and that's Lear Capital. As many of you know, I am very particular at who sponsors this show. And I want you to know that I choose Lear Capital because they are aligned with American values, and their priority is to help educate and inform people, you and I, on what's happening in not only just politics, but the economy as well, and how to protect and preserve the wealth you already have. They also have a must-read report called The Tipping Point that explains why our American financial system is broken, how the US dollar is on its way to being extinct, and the plan for countries to move out from under the US dollar with a new gold-backed currency. Will the dollar die and force us to use a digital currency? What will this mean for gold and silver? There's a lot of great insider information in this new report and it's free. So don't wait, do what I did and ask all the questions you could possibly think of. Write them down, learn and absorb the knowledge so that you can decide what's right for you and your family. Lear helped me purchase my gold and my silver and they answered all of my questions. And there's no obligation to purchase, so give them a call, 1-800-260-5075 or go to leargg.com. Learn about gold-backed IRAs or 401ks or how storage works if you don't want to take possession of your physical gold and silver like I did. Now, Lear will give Guns and Gadgets viewers $250 in their account today and will tell you how you can qualify and receive up to $15,000 in free bonus medals. All right, guys and gals, give them a call at 1-800-260-5075 or head over to leargg.com. And thanks to Lear Capital for sponsoring this video. All right, everybody, my name is Jared. This is Guns and Gadgets. And on this channel, I bring you Second Amendment news, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, no matter where it happens in this country, from litigation to legislation and anything in between. And this particular legislation I'm going to tell you about has to do with some bad and ugly and how a felon wants his rights back or has most of his rights back, except for one main one. Let's talk about it. So an Iowa man who was convicted of gang-related offenses 32 years ago is suing the Iowa governor's office for the loss of his rights to own a firearm. Now his name is Anthony Brown, he's 52 years old, and he lives in Iowa City, and he's suing Governor Kim Reynolds, as well as the Johnson County Sheriff, Brad Kunkel, in the U.S. District for the Southern District of Iowa. It's a federal court. Brown claims his past convictions for violent crime should not have resulted in the permanent loss of his right to keep and bear arms. Now, Brown uh, was released from prison. He completed his sentence in January of 1998. And in July of 2005, then Iowa Governor uh, Tom Vilsack issued, now check this out, this is where it gets interesting. The governor issued an executive order that restored all of Brown's rights to citizenship except for his right to purchase, carry, or possess a firearm. Later that same year, Brown even earned a degree, a college degree in computer science from the University of Iowa. So he's trying to prove that he is now a law-abiding citizen who is being a productive member of society. Brown has been employed full-time since 2006, and he's even a registered voter in Johnson County, and that's usually a, a right that uh, felons don't get back, is the right to vote. He even has had a high-level security clearance uh, from April of 19 to late December of 2021, where the U.S. Department of Defense for his work at the Collins Aerospace uh, Center. So, again, he's proving that he's doing the right things for a long time. The lawsuit was filed two weeks ago in state court, but has since been moved to federal court. So this is a federal lawsuit now. And it seeks a declaratory ruling that would restore Brown's right to possess firearms. He wants a Second Amendment back. All right, so what did he do? A lot of people are probably asking, like, what's the scenario? Why did he get jammed up and why are we here? Well, the court records indicate Brown's conviction stem, stem from a 1991 incident where uh, he and other members of the, the Black Gangster Disciples gang, they had an altercation with a rival gang member. How it went down was Brown and other members of his gang followed the rival gang member home when one of Brown's crew, who was carrying a handgun, approached the window of the house, fired a gun inside, striking the rival gang member's mother, puncturing her lung. Now, Brown was charged with aiding and abetting attempted murder, willful injury, and criminal, criminal gang participation. 
He was acquitted on the aiding and abetting charge, but was convicted of the other two offenses, which is why he served time in prison. Brown says he and his wife planned to move to Illinois, where, by state law, he can petition to have his right to own a firearm restored. But the restoration of his rights there is predicated on the restoration of his rights in Iowa, where his crimes were committed. Thus, this lawsuit. Now, Brown has also said that he wants his rights restored for the same reason that anybody else would. For hunting, protection of his home, and to engage in recreational target shooting. Now, guys and gals, what say you? <laughs> Sorry, uh, coughing and sneezing today. Allergies are real. Uh, so for me, what is my opinion? It's changed over years, and it's uh, a lot of it's because of this channel and the research that I've been doing for the last decade. Um, my, my, my view now, my opinion now, is that if you are sentenced to prison for a crime that you committed, and you have served your debt to society, you're released from prison as a free man or a free woman, I believe all of your rights should be restored and returned. All of them. If you're not able to live life as a free man or a free woman, meaning you don't get all your rights back, then you might as well just remain in prison. Why? Because if you cannot protect yourself, if you have to live your life in a constant state of potential victimhood, then you can never truly be a free man or a free woman. And that's just the fact. Now that's what I feel, what say you, the viewer of Guns and Gadgets? I know this is a polarizing topic, I want you to take the 30,000 foot view on this one. This person did some bad stuff, as a young person he was a gang member, somebody he was with pulled the trigger and, and caused injury and pain. Since getting out of prison, governor gave all of his rights back but one. He has received a college degree, high-level security clearance with the DOD, and wants to be a free man. I'd be interested to read your comments down below, because this one is one that you either are... Uh, it's, there's no gray area. It's, it's black or white view. For me, I used to be a person who said, absolutely not. You don't get those rights back. But I have... Honestly, I have a lot of family members who are in that, have been in that scenario. And uh, if you're released you're a free man or a free woman, then you should be a free man or a free woman. And you can't be truly free unless you have all of your rights. Guys and gals, thank you for your time. I appreciate each and every single one of you more than you know. If you love the Second Amendment and want to stay in tune to what happens in the Second Amendment, then subscribe to this channel down below and I will keep you in that loop because I put out information every single day, multiple times a day. So check back often and uh, subscribe to the channel to help us out, like the video, share it, do all the things, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.